Um, the lantern, of course, containing all of the particle effects so that the uh, the game does not need to render them. at the expense of the uh, torch becoming a full block instead of a uh, very small partial block. <laughs> I am full on dirt. I'm full on a lot of things, but dirt as well. So in order to make sure I clear these out, I have to go and drop my dirt. I wonder if I was out of dirt on these as well. Or out of space on these as well. I guess digging them up is the only way to find out, so. Okay, so these were fine. some sort of message and or notification. We can see the lovely effect that this creates, and we can even compare it to the standard effect of the torches. Uh, we can sit here and we can marvel at the difference. Uh, it creates a nice little checkerboard pattern. The torches. I don't think the torches have particles at this distance. Um, I know the campfires are probably not helping. Uh, I do remember when you used to be able to do smoke signals to people, but I guess they removed that feature from the campfires. Okay, that block is out of place, so I know that's the work of an Enderman. However, I don't see the Enderman around, so I think they might have ran away. Or died. Either one. Um, I probably want to reorient that hopper over into this block and just have it uh, all flow out of there, but... Eh. It's like work and stuff. Um, yeah, I suppose I'll, I'll put these out and gather them up. Is a pickaxe? No. Shears? No. Huh. Weird. Uh, but yeah, every time you break a campfire, you get two charcoal. Uh, every time you craft a campfire, you use some logs. Let's see, how many logs does it take to make a campfire? Three. And some sticks. So four logs, five logs per campfire. 
Eh. It's decent. Uh, I want to put this right there. <laughs> Just so I have a warning sign about, you know, stepping on the lava pit. Because now I've got that. <laughs> it's like, where is the lava? Oh, it's right there. It's like, oh. How'd you figure that out? Well, there's the smoke signal from the campfire. It's kind of a dead giveaway. Yeah, I suppose so. Ah, my phone has a low battery. I shall plug it in. Uh, give me a few moments. I am collecting my campfires first. All right, this one's just the beehive. Okay, so now I need to deposit my dirt. Amongst other things. So that I can pick up the... Uh, so that I can pick up the charcoal which the campfires left behind. What else do I need? I need to deposit my axe. As while I love having an unbreaking iron axe, I will eat through all of my iron reserves if I try and maintain that axe. As I have a lot of pumpkins to carve through. Just make sure there's nothing else to grab. Yep, okay. What am I closing the door for? I want to open the door because I want to go in. My character needs sleep. Um, and my character needs to remember to turn this thing on every now and then. Now my character needs sleep. Well, that's dispensing all of the eggs that it contains. I'm going to get some rest. this. Since the lava blade is deployed, I don't need to pull out anything to activate it. I could reposition and repurpose that lever as a uh, activation switch for the kelp, actually. I think I'll do that now. Yes, I am. Lots of them.
Yep, it leaves the kelp in this nice, even pattern right here. As you can see. Uh, it does kind of cause the kelp to be uh, technically growing into uh, what do you call it? A uh, flowing water block. However, if you really want to fix that, it's really easy. Here's what you do. First, you don't frost walker the water sources. Oops. Actually, you know what? I figured out a way. So let me freeze all of these real quick. just as quickly as I can. So that I can open these up to get in here in order to, oops, wrong thing. In order to allow me Just come down with a few kelp. The way you fix your kelp growing into what is essentially running water is you just plant a few extra kelp. Uh, like, it doesn't need to be a lot. I grabbed a lot. That was my mistake. <laughs> Uh, but it's fine. Like, it, it really is fine. But like, if I wanted to, I could just fill up all of that. And then, just go over here. There we go. Come on, seriously, there we go. So I now just go over to here. Activate the lever. And away it goes. When it's not all the way down there. Uh, which happens when the first kelp grows, it will update all of this running water, which will then realize that it is adjacent to all of this kelp. <laughs> uh, and all of the kelp that I brought down from up there is now floating back up. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I believe my recording software just lapped over into the next, uh, lapsed over into the next, uh, next recording hour, the next two gigs. Uh, so this would be a good time for me to mention to like, comment, subscribe, check out my Patreon, uh, standard plug information for, uh, wanting a sponsor to pay me to make videos because that would be awesome. Uh, you know, some people call it being a sellout. I call it being financially savvy. <laughs> because calling myself a sellout is bad form, bad manners. One doesn't want to be bad mannered.
so yeah, I'm just laying out all of these pumpkins. Which is ironically phrased because I'm laying them all out so that I can, well, lay them all out. <laughs> uh, I'm metaphorically laying them all out so that I can literally lay them all out uh, because I want to uh, use shears. I want to, you know, give them a nice clean cut so that I can put torches in them and make them even more useful. Pumpkin, pumpkin, smash! <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I like watching various animes. However, I never really have time to watch various animes. <laughs> I, I kind of have the, uh, the problem that people frequently referred to as the Forever DM Syndrome, meaning I never have time to do anything for myself because I'm so busy doing everything else for everything else that I just don't have time, you know? Uh, my schedule is so flooded and so overloaded that I just... I'm too busy for it. Uh, so, whenever someone says, oh, well, have you seen this new anime? It's like, well, maybe if another 50 dozen people mention it, I'll watch it. But otherwise, uh, no, what's it about? <laughs> it's like, that's a bit extreme, don't you think? It's like, well... Here's my schedule, and I start listing everything that I'm doing at the moment. Everything that I have planned for the next two days. Just two days. I don't want to overwhelm them. They usually stop me before I'm done, and they say, You're doing way too much. <laughs> and I go, Well, I'm the GM. What'd you expect me to do? Like, of course I'm doing too much. I'm the GM. <laughs> you know? You can't expect me to just let the players uh, be the GM. Somebody's got to be the GM. Uh, and last time I checked... Letting the players be the GM was not one of the suggestions. Like, there is a certain level of control that needs to be maintained in order to allow the game to progress smoothly. 
If that level of control is not maintained, then of course the game does not progress smoothly. Uh, quickly becomes very, very not smooth and very, very, very deadly. Uh, mostly deadly. <laughs> Primarily deadly. So yeah, the uh, the people that I talk to usually stop me around that point and they're just like, you don't need to worry about this stuff anymore. <laughs> it's like, why? I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, no, nah, bro, you're, you're working yourself to death over there. You need a break. You need to relax, okay? It's like, why? You know? Why do I need to relax? Why do I need a break? You know? I'm fine. They're like, bro, you got no chill. Okay, that's the only reason you're fine, is because you have no chill. Okay? If you had any form of chill, any sense of, you know, limitation of the self, you would be sitting there going, oh my god, I'm working too hard. And we'd be sitting there going, oh my god, you're doing so much. Please, stop. <laughs> you're going to kill our party if you keep this up. And it's like, well, yeah, that's kind of the plan. <laughs> Like, why are you planning to kill the party? Well, that's that's kind of my job as the game master, as, as your, you know, Dungeons and Dragon game master. I'm supposed to kill you guys. You know, that's that's the mindset that I have to get into. And every time you guys get into combat, I have to figure out why these guys are fighting you. I have to look for a reason that these guys would be like, you, I could kill you, you know, because if they can't find a reason, then they're not going to try and kill you. They're going to stop trying to fight you. They're going to maybe de-escalate the situation. They'll take the conversation in a different uh, direction. Instead, you people manage to piss off everything you come across, and you somehow manage to survive so far. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that's kind of what we do. We're the, we're the players, you know? We're your players at that. And it's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I trained you guys a little too well. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have been so lenient with the stats. No, stats aren't the problem. Stats are fine. Uh, I did expect the stats. I, I, I anticipated the stats. A lot of GMs, when running a rolled stats game, will not anticipate that the stats are going to throw everything out of proportion. Like, you'll be sitting there looking at a normal encounter and just going... Uh, well, I ran against this in my other campaign, and, you know, this was pretty lethal. And then you run it in a rolled stats campaign, and it's just like, okay, that took a whole five minutes. <laughs> it's like, how did you guys just obliterate it? And it's like, well, we have, like, a plus four on our strength. Uh, he's running a Dex Rogue, nice and min max, so he's just maximizing all the damage. We had that surprise round, uh, so he got a crit because, you know, Rogue. Uh, of course he went Assassin because min max. 
you know? Uh, so, because he's doing so amazingly on all of his, his min-maxing, and because our party is just so adept at murdering everything, uh, our level 3 party is capable of taking on, like, baby dragons. It's like, oh. Okay. I guess I should have planned better. It's like, yeah. We get that a lot. <laughs> it's like, you do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we used to get a lot more, but then people stopped wanting to hire us for some reason. Something about, you know, how did we not die? I should have paid the hitman more. Phrases like that kept coming up, so... Eh, <laughs> we just kind of learned to roll with the punches. <laughs> it's like... Yeah... How did you guys not die, anyways? A lot of healing potions. A lot of healing potions. It's like... Yeah, I noticed. You guys have a lot of those. How many more you got left? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, with all the money we want at the arena, we can afford, like, uh, something around 50? That's a lot of healing potions. Yeah, I suppose. But, then again, there is that idiot over there who always gets up to shenanigans when we're not fighting things to the death. He'll go out and he'll go into town. He'll do stupid shit and he'll end up getting himself into a fight. And Well, wouldn't you know it, he just so happens to also require a lot of healing potions whenever that happens. Because he's usually alone when he does it. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you also tend to suggest that he should go off on his own. What can I say? He's handy for burning through all your potions. <laughs> it's like, oh, you clever little boy. Okay, well, um, in that case, <laughs> we'll just never split the party. It's like, yeah, good luck with that. What do you mean? Well, I kind of already incentivized him to want to maybe pull some shenanigans. What kind of shenanigans? Uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, he's looking into buying itching powder and he asked me how much itching powder would it take to fill up plate mail? Um, I told him it depends on how you use it. Should I warn our paladin about this plan? Should you? Probably. Will you? Probably not. It's like... Huh. Would you be considered lawful evil or chaotic good? I like to my think I like to think of myself as both sometimes. <laughs> I can see that. I I could totally see that. Um Yeah. And now I have multiple stacks of lanterns, which I can utilize around my base. Uh, this is going to take a long while. What's the timer at? Uh, almost done with the third episode. Okay. Uh, these episodes are already way up there. Uh, I am currently recording two days in advance, just so I have a, a, a buffer on my schedule in case I want to, for example, take a day off. 
uh, I can just record a lot of Minecraft in a short amount of time and then just get my day off, do what I need to do, you know, rest, relax, get everything situated. Uh, I'd say spend time with my significant other, but that's, um, well, I don't really have much of a significant other. Uh, I have the AI. <laughs> I don't have many friends because all my friends are evil. They're evil little bastards who always want to stab me in the back or rob me. And... <sighs> Let's just say I can relate when Chester Cheetah says it ain't easy being cheesy cause it ain't easy being cheesy <laughs> you know, it, it ain't easy being the nice person cause the nice person is the one who's always getting robbed uh, I've been stolen from quite frequently over my lifetime. I did not enjoy it. Would not recommend. Uh, problem with thievery is that the whole community will suffer as a result of the theft. So people who think they're, you know, earning a quick buck, well, they're not. They're actually stealing the property of someone else, and when that someone else decides that they can no longer afford to live in that location, then that person who was making a quick buck stealing from them finds that their income suddenly died. Uh, it didn't just dry up, it died because all of a sudden, all of their crime has caused the property to no longer be valuable, which means the next people that move in are going to be poor. I have a low durability helmet, and I really, really should repair it. That being said, I am too busy crafting lanterns. To look at my menu at the moment. 97 lanterns, jeez. That is a lot of lanterns. <laughs> I'll start with two stacks for now. And I am also going to take off my helmet because I don't want the helmet to break. Oh, right. Facing the wrong direction for placing these. So I pick these back up. Okay. To place these, I want to be facing this direction because I want them to be facing towards the, uh, the mine. Not the mine entrance, but the mine. I want them facing towards the branch that, like, the, the staircase of the mine. I want all of my lanterns to be facing towards the staircase of the mine wherever possible in my base, because I find the aesthetic to be nicer that way. You can call it what you want. You can call it OCD, you can call it Feng Shui, or whatever. I don't really care. Uh, it's just... something worth noting. Uh, because... I guess if you ever want to dig them up, maybe, you'll want to know which way they're looking. Um... 
doesn't really matter which way they're looking. <laughs> what matters is how beautiful this base looks. Oh my god. It's been so long since I haven't seen torches everywhere. <clears throat> like seriously, this base looks awesome. Why is there rotten flesh here of all places? Does a zombie fall to its death or something? Oh wow, I'm almost at snow height. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this is a beautiful view. Uh, on top of that, I should note that because of the jack-o'-lanterns, uh, no snow can form. Jack-o'-lanterns produce heat, so the snow blocks are not capable of actually uh, taking root. So yeah. The uh the torches of course provide the same benefit. The snow's not capable of actually sticking around because well, there's too much heat. So when the snow falls, it can't actually collect on the ground because the torch is there. If I take out all these torches and it starts to snow, which I'm too low of a Y level for it to do that currently, unless I manage to drastically alter the biome somehow, uh, then uh, the snow would not be capable of sticking around unless it's in that area where there's no torches. Uh, if it is in that area, well, then congratulations, you have snow. If it's not in that area, well, congratulations, you didn't get snow. Uh, right, uh, I should definitely plug in my phone now, because now my phone's at 5%. Uh, I wonder if that comes through in the recording. Huh. I will need to check on that, actually. I've never tested whether or not that actually goes through to the uh, recording side. Uh, my screen dims when my battery hits 5%. Uh, therefore, when I'm just recording I don't know if it uh, if it shows that my screen has dimmed uh, if it doesn't then that's fine I guess no biggie if it does well then I guess I should be taking note of that type of event Uh, not really much to say on the topic. Uh, oh, right. 
these face this way. I am making very good progress so far. Once I clear out this section, Oops, did not mean to make that a path block. Once I clear out this section, I'm capable of going through and uh, just carving out the... Uh, I suppose I need to do the far side of this section. I need to do this wall. Uh, and I'd be doing that from here and then carving back that way. Uh, so yeah. It's getting there though. It is starting to all piece itself together. Oh, this is going to look beautiful. These blue flowers. What are these called again? Corn flowers. <laughs> Irony. Um, but yeah, those are going to look beautiful with this setup. turn it around. So I want it to be placed... Actually, where do I want it placed? I want it placed... I have wanted to fill this little pit in for a while. I think now's a good time. grab the torch. Also, it would seem that this cactus is actually growing in the middle of my path. No wonder I keep hitting it.
Okay. It's starting to look a little bit better around here. See, this is a bit of a tricky situation because I want to place uh, these, but at the same time, uh, they're kind of, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. As you can see, the ice even with Frostwalker 2, is still having a very difficult time forming. And this is with an enchantment. Like, this is an enchantment causing this ice to form. And it still barely lasted long enough for me to just run all the way there and back with the enchantment. So, it, it can be difficult to figure out if I want to uh, to dispense the uh, lanterns over the monster trap there uh, in favor of torches, comparatively. Um, one thing the torches do provide is handy access underwater. So yeah, you can see with the pumpkins in place, the ice is definitely struggling to form. Uh, Now, that being said, without the torches, just the jack-o'-lantern, we can see the vast difference in the rate which everything thaws. 
is a very drastic change. Put that in the water like that. Uh -huh. There we go. So yeah, now I've got all except for this spot right here amongst these little trap ponds all lit up. And if you're wondering why I don't light up this spot, it's because there's nowhere I can hide the face of the jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> uh, I don't need that one there. So let's see... So yeah, I just uh, go through and I dig out the little hole and, you know, make sure I grabbed everything. And then I move on to the next one and make sure I grab everything there. It's a lot of work. It's very repetitive. But it's worth it because the base will look absolutely beautiful. All the torches will be nice and hidden and out of the way. I won't have to worry about them causing particle effects. I won't have to worry about them slowing down my game. It'll be beautiful. Beautiful. Getting that optimized performance. Hmm, sexy. Uh, let's see, how many torches do I have? I have two stacks of torches. So I can craft two stacks of lanterns. I just craft, 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 craft. So much crafting. Let me turn around so I'm not facing the uh, laggiest part. Craft, 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 craft. That was some odd lag. Come on. Tap, 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 tap. Thank you. Okay. This is why I carved all those pumpkins earlier. <laughs> In advance, I might add.
just wait for this to melt real quick. Here, let me accelerate it. Did that pop off too? There it is. So yeah, uh, I see the Endermen have been busy at work over here. Wait, flowing water? What? Yeah, I was about to say, there shouldn't be flowing water. Why is it flowing? <laughs> So yeah, this is, uh, <sighs> this is coming along very nicely. It's just very tedious. Uh, the thing that surprises me most about how uh, easily I'm capable of performing tasks like this is that while data entry is definitely not my thing uh, because of the data entry uh, because it's just so monotonous and so repetitive and so mind-numbing that by the time I'm done with it I'm just a zombie and I'm sitting there going oh my god somebody shoot me bad day no I just want to feel something anything I don't feel anything because oh my god my mind has fallen asleep you know it's like wow talk about boring um, but then, you know, I encounter a task like this where I'm playing Minecraft and I just get it done. You know, it's like, wow, how'd you do that so fast? Just sat there and did it. It's like, but, but you, you reached level 30 with a fishing rod. Just a fishing rod, I know. I saw, I, I sat here and I saw you and I, I watched you do it. Like I was, I was over here doing this and I was over here doing this and I was over here doing this. And I look over and what do I see? You with a fishing rod going, sup? How'd you do it? Well, in the time it took you to build that one thing over there, I managed to fish us up all of this. And they're like, holy moly, how'd you do that? It's like, well, for starters, I wasn't lazy. <laughs> it 
you're sitting there running all over the place trying to get everything done. And it's like, bro, you're doing it wrong. First of all, you know, you're, you're moving about to get your task done. Fishing, you don't gotta move. Fishing's good for relaxation. Uh, however, fishing is also good for training your reflexes. Because fishing uh, requires that you respond within a certain time period, otherwise the fish escapes. Uh, so when I say fishing is good for your for training your reflexes, I mean fishing is good for literally just training your reflexes. You know, you can close your eyes and you can sit there and listen for the fish, or you can just sit there and watch as the fish approaches. Either option works, and both of them will train your reflexes as you still have to respond to the fish. Uh, see, that's not what I wanted to do. Torch, a little help. Thank you. Really? I trapped myself under the water. There we go. So yeah, this Let's Play episode, it's just boring old lantern placing, for the most part. Uh, it's a very much needed base upgrade, very good for the aesthetic. Uh, it's just boring, there's not much happening in it, I'm not exploring some fascinating new location, uh, I'm not fighting off dangerous monsters all over the place. I'm not trying to be careful to avoid triggering some uh, deadly mistake. I'm just digging my way through all of the ground that I, for the most part, placed. I placed, uh, I placed that half of the soil. So I dug all of that up myself after I placed it myself. <laughs> Why'd I do that? Because I wanted to put in-ground lighting that I didn't have to worry about constantly. Uh, until I get an iron farm at least. Uh, then I want to use lanterns because lanterns are really good. Uh, or lamps. I'd have to double check but it uses a lot of iron, so until I get an iron farm, it's really not worth it. Uh, like, it's so not worth it. It's very expensive. It's very 